Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to figure out which reloading scale you should buy. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of me here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. As we said in the intro, we're going to talk about reloading scales today. I'll start with, I'm sure that this video is going to rub somebody the wrong way, but try and be patient with everybody in the comments section below and we'll all get along. In today's video, we're going to go over a very wide range of scales, starting on the very low end over here, going all the way to the highest end scale that I certainly have, which is the FX120i. One of my biggest pet peeves in the reloading community is all of us talking each other into spending money on things that we may or may not really need. And if you're a reloader that hasn't bought a tool that they've never used yet, congratulations, you're a unicorn. None of us really want to waste our money, but many of us decide that everyone that reloads should do it the same way, my way, because it's the only way that's correct, right? Personally, I disagree with that, and I think one of these reloading scales may fit you much better than another. And you don't need to spend an arm and a leg necessarily to get what you're hoping for. So let's learn a little bit more about these scales and exactly what all of them bring to the table and which one might be right for you. One of the things you'll notice right out of the gate, these are all digital scales. There's no balance beam scales on the table. I'm not saying that a balance beam scale isn't what you should do. Maybe that's what's right for you, but the digital scales are fast and usually able to be as or more accurate quicker, at least for me. If you want to use a balance beam scale, by all means, that's certainly your choice. If you're a planker and you shoot short distances, you may just want to have the cheapest powder and bullet combination you can shoot that actually shoots reasonably for your rifle. Throwing charges might be perfectly fine, and you might only use your scale to actually set up your powder throw to throw a rifle load within three tenths of a grain either way, and you're perfectly happy to go. Or you guys may reload hunting ammo. You only hunt distances that are under 300 yards, but you just want to make sure that you can get those 20 rounds that you load every year for your hunting ammunition to be repeatable when you load the next 20 rounds three years from now. In my opinion, your use case should be what drives your reloading scale decision. On the other hand, if you want to shoot a thousand yards plus, you want to make sure that your extreme spread and standard deviations are as low as possible and every detail matters, you may want to go to this higher end scale if it proves it can actually make your loads better. Because that's what we're all really looking for, is making our loads as good as possible for the most reasonable amount of money. Or at least, that's what I'm looking for. Toys are fun too, but you know. All that aside, what scale do we really need, right? We're going to go over these scales the best I can, at least the ones you can still get but that's such a couple definitions real quick. Accuracy. When I looked it up to get the proper definition was the degree to which the result of the measurement, calculation, specification conforms to the correct value or a standard. What that means to me is when I take one of my 20 grain weights and I put it on a scale, how accurately can it measure 20 grains? If I put a 20 grain weight on, it seems to be able to read 20 grains very accurately. So that has good accuracy. All these scales are going to have a different accuracy between them. I'm not going to tell you specifically which one is more accurate. You guys can decide based on the information that you see today. Resolution. Another important factor. Our definition of resolution is the resolution of a scale is the smallest increment in applied weight that can be detected or displayed on the scale. How many digits the scale has is not exactly right because the highest resolution scale here is actually 0.02 grains, not 0.01. So the smallest increment that our scale will essentially report is 0.02. 02 grains. The two Hornady scales here, as well as the RCBS, actually only have it measure in tenth of grain increments. This WAOW scale, as well as the AND scale, report in 0.02 grain increments. If you see, if I throw a 20 grain weight here, you can see I'm reporting 19.96 grains. But if we put something on the scale that might not have the, the zero as the last digit, well, we'll put a pan on there and we'll see that we're reporting 84.76. And so you'll notice it went from 0.4 to 0.6. There, kind of bounce back and forth, but I'm probably generating a little bit of air movement as well. But you can see it's reporting in 0.02 grain increments. So that is the resolution of the scale. Another important term we're going to use is repeatability. Repeatability is the closeness of the agreement between the results of successive measurements of the same measurement carried out under the same conditions of measurement. In other words, being able to actually weigh the same identical thing, the same person, the same time, and trying to get the same answer. So can we actually get an answer from the scale that is repeatable? At least that's how I'm going to define it for the purpose of this video. A quick overview of the scales. This is Hornady's Generation 1 GS1500 scale. This measures in up to the tenth of grain increment. When I put the same thing on this scale multiple times, uh, depending if you put it on one side or the other, you're going to get different answers. 141.9, 41.8 I've got a couple times. 
So again, I'm not encouraging you to purposely set the pan wrong on the scale. The longer the scale's on, you're going to see a little bit of drift. It's just going to happen with the scale. Now, this is the generation two. You really, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the G1 scale. Number one, because it turns off every 45 seconds and it drives me crazy. Um, and you can't really buy it anymore. So we're probably not going to do a whole much more with that today. We are going to talk about the Gen 2 because this is still for sale. Now you can see 41.9 grains. Theoretically, Hornady thinks that you can trickle on this scale. I wouldn't recommend it. But overall, Hornady does have an accuracy claim for this scale of plus or minus 0.1 grains. Whatever weight we apply to this, we should give a measurement which is either on or within plus or minus a tenth of a grain. Now this is actually a similarly priced scale, slightly more expensive, but certainly not much. You can see this reads in 0.02 grains. Like I mentioned before, this is a WAOW scale. I would put a link in the description box below, but the actual location where I purchased this no longer sells this exact model. We're simply just going to refer this as a very cheap milligram scale. It doesn't really have a published accuracy that I can recall, at least on the webpage, but we're going to talk a little bit more about it. If I was to pick something this is similar to, I'm not insulting any of the Gem Pro owners out there, this is going to perform somewhere in the ballpark of a Gem Pro 250, though probably Gem Pro 250 is a little bit more, it's certainly a more high-end scale than this is. Next down the line, we can see we have an R, the RCBS Charge Master. Again, they claim 0.1 grain accuracy from this scale. Keep in mind, we're only talking about the scale portion of this. I do use this to dispense powder. It's very possible to dispense more than that, further away from what your desired load is. So don't think you're just typing in a number and that's what's automatically going to be spit out. You still have to read the scale and possibly adjust the charge or repeat a charge. That could easily be an overthrow. Now our newest scale that we have down here and is certainly new to the channel is this AMD FX120i. This resolves the same as our WAOW scale at 0.02 grains, but it uses a very different technology. This is actually not a scale. It is properly called a balance. Technically, this is a magnetic force restoration balance. Google it if you'd like. I'm sure I won't be able to do its definition justice. Essentially, it is a more accurate way to measure things. I don't want you to get up, caught up too much in this. Just realize that there is actually a balancing circuit in here that allows us to have better resolution than some of our other standard scales. All that aside, you're probably tired of me talking. What scale do I really want, right? And we're going to get into this. As we go through and show you the response of different things on every different scale, I want you guys to have a couple references so you can really see what this might mean to you. If you guys are watching this channel, maybe you're also familiar with the Ultimate Reloader channel. And they've actually been doing, just recently, they've been doing a couple more videos with a gentleman named Adam McDonald. And he is the mastermind behind the Auto Trickler powder dispensing system. He's also the mastermind behind the two box chrono, but we're going to handle this in another video upcoming. In the description box below, I'm going to put a link to his website slash blog so you can go into a lot more detail than we're going to talk about today. But for reference, as we talk about what these can actually resolve and what that's going to mean to your reloading session, I would like to use an example that he has from his blog. To me, being able to put an actual value on one kernel of powder and what it actually means to you, that's what I'm hoping to do today because with our finest resolution scale, we're hoping to be able to resolve a single kernel of powder. At least that's what he talks about on his website. So like I said, I'm going to paraphrase here. I encourage you to hit that link after the video is over. A lot of different statistical things he has on his website, guys. I think there's some great information here. I am picking from his blog here, but he discusses his 308 competition load, a 308 caliber, 185 grain bullet out of a 30 inch barrel with a 44 grain load of Varget. His velocity that he's achieving is 2750 feet per second. His relationship is claimed between his powder and muzzle velocity is 50 feet per second per grain. Obviously, yours might be slightly different, but 50 feet per second per grain does some easy math. And he goes through and basically puts the value of one kernel of Varget actually increasing his muzzle velocity at 1.16 feet per second. He has some statistics behind it, and it sounds very reasonable to me. Keep in mind, this will vary based on your application. So if you're getting more than 50 feet per second per grain, one kernel is going to mean a little bit more to you. If you're only getting 25 feet per second per grain, it might mean less. I think in general, 302 is a very common load for you to reference. It's pretty simple to equate whatever rifle you might be loading to this. His estimate for one kernel of Varget is somewhere in the value of a little over 0.02 grains. Let's just say about four kernels of Varget per 0.1 grains. If we can only resolve in 0.1 grains and it's possible for our scales accuracy to be off by 0.1 grains. Six or seven kernels of powder could still probably meet the spec for accuracy. But even if it's only three or four kernels of uncertainty, we can easily see that this could be adding error in our muzzle velocity of maybe up to five feet per second. And like I said before, guys, 
five feet per second may mean absolutely nothing to you, or five feet per second might be what you guys have been dying to try and shave off of your extreme spread. The more work we're gonna do on the channel, we're gonna see if that happens as I use our new scale. So with all that out of the way, let's actually see what kind of measurements we get as we run through our scales today, just with some check weights to see what kind of accuracy and repeatability that we can expect. Now, I don't have a calibrated set of weights. What I do have is this Lyman check weight set, and that's what we're going to be using today. As far as the measurements I've taken, I have a lot of confidence that these are very close to the weights that they are labeled with. Also for reference, we've ran through all the calibration procedures for all these scales. I wasn't going to do that on film. I'm sure if you want to look up a specific scale, you can do that. This one really isn't available where I can tell you to get it anymore. Um, we're not going to even go bother going over this one with our check weights. It's just another example. So starting right out of the gate, you can see we've zeroed all of our scales. Everything's reading zero. And so starting off with just something simple, we'll kind of run through a couple check weights. So 10 grains, 10.02. 10.02, our RCBS says it's 9.9, .9. WAOW says 10.02, and our Hornady Generation 2 says it's 10.1. Going to a 20 grain, reading 20.0, go straight to 40, 40 even. Charge master is at 19.9. When we add the second one, we're right at 40 grains. So we seem to have leveled out. Now I'll take the original 20 grain off back to 19.9 again. Our WAW is 20 even. Add that, 13.96. Now, just because I'm very familiar with this WAOW scale, one thing that I would make us aware of if we actually measure this multiple times, like remove it, and put it back on, its repeatability isn't going to be as good. This is kind of the downfall of this cheap scale, if you want to call it that. I certainly do appreciate having the extra resolution. One other note that I haven't probably mentioned up until now, but in case you guys can see, these have actually already all been leveled correctly. The This is a cheap Chinese scale, and this level is not actually placed in here correctly, so there's a big ridge on this side. And believe it or not, with my actual level, I have leveled this. Even though the bubble's not straight, the scale is actually correctly leveled. It performs much worse when that bubble is in what it says is level. So just be aware, maybe if you have one of these and you haven't had very good performance with it, you might want to pull out a real small level and actually check it and find out that that bubble might not be placed correctly in your scale. But just something to look at. Moving down the line here, our Hornady scale. Bounced around a little bit, we were at 20 grains. Add the second one, 40. So for some reason, the Hornady scale always is at 10.1 when it's at 10, and our RCBS always thinks 20 is 19.9. If I haven't told you already six times in the video, I will tell you, I think having a set of check weights is very important just to be confident in your load. You can likely simulate whatever load that it is you're looking for your goal and make sure that your scale is accurate where you're trying to actually measure. Because honestly, that's what's important. It doesn't matter what the scale reports as long as it's reporting something consistent and you know what it is so you can repeat that exact load the next time. You want to be able to be confident in your reload. So now let's measure something that's not exactly the perfect weight. So like I, I, so I like the pans and so we're obviously still zeroed on everything. Put our pan on. 84.76 grains on our A and D. 84.8, so it technically rounded up for what we believe it to be the, its actual weight. So this is where, now we're off by a tenth of a grain for what our A and D says to our WAOW scale. Like I said before, if we put it on there a couple times, we might see a slightly so, 6.8, 7.0, 6.0, 6.0. Look at the repeatability on our A and D. Now 84.74. Take a look at our Hornady scale. 84.7. Kind of why I think this is important, guys, because we don't really know what it's resolving. It's certainly not going to be a perfect weight, probably, as far as even thing, and so it's tearing off some value. And so depending on how the scale's tearing mechanism works depends on how accurate it'll be. Look at another pan real quick. And, and keep in mind, guys, if you want to do this at home, you can really weigh anything that's repeatable. If you guys had a specific case with known weights, 
Just something you can put on there to make sure before you get reloading that you're comfortable at whatever you're actually using is giving you the value that you think it should. So we're at 153.68, 153.68, 153.6. There probably aren't many of us that are actually using any of our scales without a pan. And so I thought it might be actually more interesting to have a pan on our scale, zero it out, and then actually see what type of accuracy we saw. Before, when we didn't have, uh, when we didn't have a pan, 20 grains was reading 19.9. So if we put our pan on there, 20 grains, lo and behold, 20 grains is still reading 19.9. But and there you can see, depending on what it took for its tear, now instead of 40, which was what we had for both 20 grain weights, now we have 39.9. So if we lift this, put it back a couple times, it's going to go to 40 and then back to 39.9. So just for fun, let's actually tear all of our scales with that pan on there. We reserved all of our scales with our new pan or a different pan, and we'll take the same measurements again. 20 grains on our pan. Still comes up to be 20 grains. Add another 20 grain weight. Nope, 40.02. If I so it's going to say 40 grains. So, like I said before, these aren't really calibrated weights, but I found them to be pretty well reading what they say they are. If we go to the RCBS again, 19.9, 39.9 for the 40 and 19.9 for the 20. The WAOW scale said 40.04 for 40, 20.06, 20, 20. Looks like 40.1 grains and 20.1 grains. Though I bet that we've drifted a little bit and we have. So if we re-zero, try it again. 20 even and 40 even. So it's one of those things we have to watch our zero. Now in this one specifically, I can tell that this has drifted slightly because I know what it's basically negative value that we'd read for the tear for our pan. And so I have a sneaking suspicion that it's drifted slightly. So maybe if we take off our 40 grain weight, see our tear is reading 41.8, which usually reads 84, 86. So re tear it. There we go. We're now reading 0.02 grains the other way, 19.98, and then 40 even. So with a re-zero, depending on what your process is and how many times you want to re-tear, then maybe it's going to be right back on the money. Back to our A and D scale. There we have 40 grains on the money. Our poor RCBS scale. Oh, nope, 39.9. There it goes. I don't want to bore you guys to death, but I don't want to give you not enough information either. So if, let's throw our 100 grain weight on there. So probably nobody's using a 140 grain charge, but at least not me. So... There we are, 139.9 grains, so still within a tenth. Our A and D says 140 grains exactly. WAOW, 139.9. And I have found with heavier weights like this, it does tend to start reading a tenth or so light when you get out on a heavier load. And that's same with the Hornady right there, 139.9. If we add another 50 grains to the century weight 190, so 189 .9, 189.9, 199.0. So you guys may be asking yourselves, what does it all mean, Basil? What I can tell you, there's a whole bunch of resources of which I'm going to link below. 
One is going to be a quick video where Adam did a quick video just to show how it can actually resolve every single grain that it puts on here. And this is the heart of his auto trickler system. I may end up getting that auto trickler system one day as an add-on, but what I wanted was the accuracy part of it first. I want to make sure that it's going to do something for my loads, you know, or at least enjoy its speed rather than my current charge master. Would I like it to be a little bit faster? Of course, everyone would like it to be a little bit faster, but accuracy is really want. So if I'm going to be able to get the accuracy and it's going to do something for me and I can get the auto trickler on top of that, I may honestly sell this scale to help pay for the add-on of the auto trickler. Um, honestly, how I do things right before I bought the A&D is I throw everything with my charge master, make sure that it's reading the correct value, and I double check it with my WAOW. If, if these two scales disagree, I will basically recalibrate them and restart to make sure that they agree with each other. Another resource I'll put down below is two videos that are called Powder Drop Test 1 and Powder Drop Test 2. If you want to skip right to the punchline, you can go to the Powder Drop Test 2 video. About 2 minutes and 52 seconds in of this video on the Precision Rifle Network, and you're going to see some graphs that talk about the actual accuracy and statistics that he received on essentially several different powder dispensing systems. One is the Charge Master, another is the Auto Trickler, again with the FX120i being the scale used for that. And that system actually had the lowest SD in most every single thing that they tested. Again, if you've got 20 minutes, I would recommend watching both of those videos. The second one is honestly the entire results video. You can get most of what you want from there. But if you're really interested in how accurate these scales can be and what the actual statistics it provides in a rifle, I thought it was very interesting. They show a tuned load. The A&D scale has a insanely low standard deviation on the loads on that, and I believe it to be a 10 round string. Certainly what pushed me toward doing this, because they use the Prometheus, which is to my knowledge, at least at this time, the most expensive auto powder dispensing system that exists, which a lot of people love, and that's great. But if I can get the same accuracy with something that's significantly less expensive than that, but only a little bit more expensive than my Charge Master, then that might be something that I will look into. I hope this video might have helped you decide what scale is the right scale for you. Again, if you're just a plink and you want to make sure that you're reloading safe loads, I think something on the cheaper side is going to probably do you just fine. Again, I wouldn't discourage you ever from having check weights just to make sure that your scale is reading where you think it is reading um, before you actually start using it to measure powder charges. It's the way I always do things when I start reloading. But if you think you want just that little bit more precision, you might want to bump up to something that's going to resolve somewhere like the Gen Pro 250 does. Um, like I said, this WAW scale, I don't have anything against it. It's not perfectly repeatable. You're not going to get the same exact reading every single time. But you are usually in 0 .04, which I would characterize in this particular uh, scenario when we talk about the 308. Within two grains, plus or minus, you're going to know what your load is fairly repeatedly. And like I said, it, usually if you have any air in there, you see something drifting with your tear. Stop, re-tear it, go back, and you're going to get typically very repeatable results for... The, I believe it to be under $40 that I spent on that scale. Uh, I certainly can't complain about it. It's certainly not on the level of this A&D scale, but it does give the extra digit, which arguably could drive you crazy too. But overall, I really don't have anything to complain about. But I would warn you, if you try and do find something that looks exactly like that, I think some people only have some that read in 10th grain increments. This does read 0.02, just like you saw on our video. Now, if you guys are looking for a fairly reasonable auto dispensing powder charge system, there is nothing wrong with the RCBS Charge Master. I don't have a Charge Master Lite, um, but it's probably going to be something similar. I believe the accuracy that that scale claims is the same, plus or minus 0.1 grains. Again, you're responsible for knowing what this is reading, not just what you plugged into its charge. This can over overthrow or underthrow, and that would obviously add some error if it's not agreeing with what you you know, plugged into it. And if you guys are want to step up to the Cadillac, you know, depending on where you get this from, this can range up to a $700 scale, which is absolutely insane. Uh, I believe, honestly, last I looked from the link that it's possible to get this scale right now, at least as I'm making this video, for like $450, which is by no means cheap, but it is the first step in, in having the auto trickler system, especially if you're trying to break it into pieces. The Charge Master, I think, last I knew, was somewhere in the ballpark of just under $300 if you could find it on sale, but $300 is a good estimate. Even if you're not looking for a new reloading scale at this time, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions on the video, please put those in the comment section below. If you like content like this and you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. 
I hope to see you back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.